All right, it's April 7th. It's a little update of the farm. Um, we moved this big tarp to this side and cut it in half. So we had two 100 foot tarps. Now we have two 50 foot tarps and one 100 foot tarp. And we got most of the other side already planted out. As you can see, we got our irrigation going right now. Um, only two sprinklers are needed. Really need three right now, but we're working on it. Uh, we got some blueberry bushes planted out here the other day. Eight of them. Hopefully they'll come around in the next year or so. I'm down to one and a half beds I have left to weed here. You can see what I'm working with. Pathways look like this. But unfortunately this side of the beds never got the tarp so this is kind of the worst of the worst here. Almost done. Uh, these, these beds on this side I think I'm gonna not put mulch or as much mulch on top of. Uh, because I'm going to be using a direct seeder a lot over here and the mulch seems to kind of clog up the wheel on the direct seeder so um, Learning as we go We got a bunch of Garlic coming in these front rows Getting close well, I guess we got another month or more Um Really simple setup. Really simple. Turn it off for now. We'll go walk out here. So these front three rows are probably going to get replanted. Um, we tried to kind of push the season, but we had a frost for like three or four days in a row, and the soil just got too cold, and nothing really came back. But these were beets. Kind of hard to see. The golden beets. Uh, but man, they just kind of stopped growing after it got cold for a few days. Same with this lettuce. It just kind of quit. <laughs> uh, which is alright. We knew it was a bit of a gamble. Um, this spinach might take maybe, maybe, maybe give it another week or so. Um, and here's the direct seeded spinach on this row we don't even have to thin this stuff it can just grow and we got really good germination so that'll be nice and here's a direct seeded row of uh, radishes um, next few days we need to go through and thin the clumps out but decent germination on that and then the next one we did beets which are coming. It's not as quick. Um, this next row is pak choy. I think we're gonna grow this stuff full size. And then this next row will be a lettuce mix, which will be, or a salad mix, I guess. And it's gonna be the same pak choy, but smaller and kale. Hopefully we can get a few harvests. Next row here is um, an heirloom Yugoslavian lettuce. I grew this for years in our um, home garden and it's a great, great, great lettuce. Great flavor and um, really grows in just about any conditions. So we're gonna give that a shot. Um, here's some Swiss chard. A bunch of different colors. Some reds and some yellows. Another row of that uh, heirloom lettuce. And I'll show you the irrigation setup. She hoes and goes up to these chopper heads. Zip tied on. 
I just move them around trying to find the right spot. Seems to be decent here. Uh, this next row is kind of our only experiment. Um, usually with big brassicas like broccoli, collards, or cauliflower, we do two rows every 18 inches. But this is cauliflower, and you can see we did three rows every 12 inches. And I'm going to try to harvest the greens off of it really intensively. Um, and give it like a a photosynth photosynthesis booster um, and see if it'll still flower and see what the flavor is if it does flower if not no big loss we still got greens out of it here's another bed of that Yugoslavian lettuce and some mixed lettuce in the back that I had just left over uh, some greenhouse lettuce and then this next row is broccoli so this is how we normally plant it two wide um every 18 inches so these are 30 inch beds 30 inches wide by 50 feet long um, we have 23 on this side and then here's everybody's recommendations all the books and stuff i'm reading everybody says grow salanova so, I'm doing it. So far, compared, because this is a butterhead lettuce, um, compared to that Yugoslavian stuff the same age, it's about half the size. It is a, a lot more dense of a lettuce. It'll probably weigh a lot more on the scale when it's grown out, but we'll see um, if it's worth the difference. The pelleted seed is nice. Uh, and this is our last row, just broccoli. Starting to really look like a farm and green up. And then we have some edible flowers we're going to throw in our lettuce mixes. And some nasturtiums that are planted in between there. And then down here they're kind of intensively planted. I think. I forgot what these flowers are called. Violet or something. But we'll just throw some color in with our lettuce mixes. And a little more garlic. It's funny, this garlic is doing better than the front. I thought it got less light. Let's see how everything's doing in the greenhouse. See, I got all the vents down back. Once I get the aquaponics system up, I'm gonna have to put like screens everywhere to so keep it the bugs out. For now, doesn't really matter. This stuff needs to go out. This is like the collard greens. One more row of broccoli and cauliflower in here. Um, Swiss chard, salanova, and we got the butter kind and with the oak leaf on both the red and green. All this needs to go out this coming week. Um, and this is the next round of. Salanova coming up. Pea shoots that are going wild and some micro cilantro that's ready to all that's ready to harvest. Do that tomorrow morning. Use some beets coming up. I, and um, this is some lettuce mix. Since it's we're a small operation. You know, hand transplanting is almost easier for us because you don't have to go back and thin. It takes a little longer initially, but hey. Another thing of spinach. 
onions, beets going out in a few days, and a goji berry. That'll go down with our cabin and our little food forest down there. And yeah, just some leftovers. Stay tuned.